Hey there YouTube, welcome to Big Mike Beard Wisdom. So today, we're going to be talking about the Cobalt 80 volt max lawnmower that I have. And more importantly, we're going to be talking about this wheel. So, if we looked really close at that wheel bearing, you can kind of see, you see the shaft here, and then part of the bearing. On this side, you see the shaft is almost hidden because that inner part of the bearing is still there <laughs> so something's going on with this other wheel over here it's very loose this one still has some play so I may wind up doing wheel bearings of both of them anyway all right so tools that you need a hammer or mallet a pair of side cutters are handy, but you can make do with other tools. Pocket knife. But you can make do with other tools. The world's best shape for a pick. <laughs> but you don't need this if you've got the pocket knife or the side cutters. Then, something to drive the bearing in. I used a 25 millimeter, or could have used a 25 millimeter socket. But, I used the old worn out bearing, too. So if you don't have a big giant socket, you could probably use this as well. Especially if your bearing's fully exploded. or another hammer and basically use the wooden handle of one hammer, set it on the bearing and gave it a love tap on top. And then I used a little bit of this three in one garage door lube, just because on the little spindle that's exposed, there was like a little bit of metal that was showing and I just, I don't want it rusting as much as possible. <laughs> so other than that, it's pretty quick. Probably take, you know, three, four minutes a wheel, depending on if you're talking to a camera. <laughs> it looks like these are probably pretty simple. I'm assuming it's got just a little cap right there. And I'm thinking you could probably pop it loose with a screwdriver but with those three little holes it's gonna be a little bit easier to use like this pick tool that I have so you could probably get in there with a screwdriver but with the pick tool it just slips right in and then when you turn it, it comes right off there's the cap and you can see there's three little fingers that just grip on not everyone's got like a pick tool but this one's kind of overkill but it's also been stored in the toolbox for a long time and it wanted to get out and play <laughs> so it looks like next there's a cotter pin here which you could use a pair of side cutters or pliers to pull it loose but again the pick tool wants to play <laughs> so the big thing is to be careful and maybe not lose it unless you know what size it is so a lot of times you can reuse these and then slide that off looks like a small washer came off so don't want to lose that one either And then looking at the shaft, looks like it's a little bit, a little bit of marring on it, but not too bad. Mostly just removal of the paint. Woo. You can see this wheel bearing's let loose bad enough that the ball bearings are visible inside of it. 
and a bird. Yep. So there's two of the bow bearings. So that's kind of a bummer. But knock this bearing out real quick. Let's see if we can't find a suitable replacement somewhere. As I'm looking at this wheel bearing, you can kind of see there's a lip on this side. That lip means that that needs to come out this way. And as I'm looking at the other side, that looks like it's another separate bearing. So there might be a bearing in the front and a bearing in the back. This one here has a little bit of play in it. So, real quick, I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to pop it this one loose because it's already somewhat knocked loose. And then we'll see if I can just push this one out by hand. I got the other one out now too. Oopsie. And then it looks like they're the same size. I should be able to basically take this to like a hardware store or something like that and see if they've got similar bearings. Real quick, we'll measure it. Obviously, the best way to do this would be with like a micrometer. But it looks like this is about a half inch on the center. And then a little bit over an inch. So it looks like maybe an inch and an eighth on the outside. About a half inch inner diameter, inch and an eighth outer diameter. Flange is really close to an inch and a quarter. So, time to go shopping. All right. So, back from the store and ran to Lowe's. I didn't see anything at Lowe's, which I should have known because I didn't really see anything when I looked online as far as wheel bearings go. I know it might just be the season, it might be something else, but basically I wound up going to the local Ace Hardware and they had these. So it's a Hillman radial bearing, one half by one and an eighth, which is pretty much the measurements that we had. And these are pretty cheap. So hopefully they wind up working out pretty good. I picked up three of them. Two new ones will go in this one. I'm hoping I can get away with just one new one in that one because I think that one bearing is about toast. But I don't know if both bearings are toast. But worst comes to worst, I know what I need in order to do another one. And then anytime you do a, a bearing, there's a couple different ways that you can drive it in that'll make it easier. So you never want to strike where the bearings ride. So you don't want to strike in there because that might damage any kind of dust seal and it might also crimp that piece of metal down onto some of the bearings. You also don't want to strike where the race goes and you also don't want to hit this part here because that might launch the center out. So on something like this, you want to strike right along this edge. So for me, this 25 millimeter impact socket sits just like that. So that'll do a pretty good job of driving it in. And another trick that you can do is actually to take the old bearing, flip it upside down, and use that as your driver. That way it applies the force almost perfectly where it needs to be. And then in this instance, we don't have to recess this because it, it stops on this lip. But if you were driving one where you had to recess it in, that's where these bearings come in super handy. 
and if you do wind up doing something on a recessed one I always recommend going to like a whiz wheel or a uh, like a grinder and stuff like that and taking just a little bit off that way it's a slightly smaller than what you're driving it into because if you were fully recessing this that way when you drive it in your driver doesn't get stuck but you basically have a built-in perfect driver by having the old bearing so set that on do the old bearing a little whap that looks pretty close I want to go just a little bit more and this is just going into plastic so there's no reason to hit this hard so that looks pretty good so we're seated all the way in looks like it's sitting flat so that one's good now for the other side with how much this kind of war looks like I was able to push this in almost all the way by hand just to make sure it's fully seated Okay, so I didn't really need the last two taps. It pushed in by hand pretty easy. Which does bug me a little bit. But I think we're good. Then for the shaft, I've got some three in one garage door lube. I'm gonna put this on it. So it's a three in one. So it'll help with lubrication and it helps prevent rust and corrosion. And if it works for garage doors, hopefully it works for this. <laughs> so part of me was thinking just maybe, you know, the old faithful, just hit it with a little bit of WD-40. But another part of me is thinking it might be better off just to put this on there. So. Make sure she's got a copious amount. And then a little bit in the wheel bearing whether it matters I don't really know but I figure every little bit helps and then the wheel just slips back on the washer so we'll hit the washer with a little bit of gold juice as well we'll slip this back in Maybe. Maybe not. There we go. Alright. And then to bend the cotter pin, I'm a big fan of using a set of like wire cutters. Just because they grip pretty well. So this probably doesn't need a lot. So just enough to go. <laughs> that way the cotter pin doesn't come out. So now it's just got a little bit of an angle to it. And then we'll put the cap back on. And it looks like there's little detents in here for where the fingers go. And you go. And goes up. No, don't run away. <laughs> so I had this just sitting on that four by four block. But anyways, should be able to just snap this in. Good to go. All right. So now that it's in, a lot less play. Spins pretty freely, which you didn't have a problem spinning before. So, but you can definitely see that inner bearing now, whereas before you couldn't. So this one, you can see that inner bearing. But there's a good bit more play here. So I'm willing to bet that inner bearing's probably pretty toasted. So we'll go ahead and do this side real fast. Just in case you don't have, a, you know, a pretty cool pick like one of these. 
You can just take, you know, a pocket knife or something else you could fit inside of that hole. <laughs> and beat up the lawnmower. But just put that in, apply a little pressure, and she pops loose. So it doesn't take a lot to take that off. So no special tools needed there. Then same thing here. So you got the cotter pin. See how it's bent just a little bit, so it's not bent a whole lot. And if you didn't want to use the pick here, you could again use a set of wire cutters. And I normally use wire cutters in this type of situation because it lets you grip it really well by the head right here. And then all you do is just work it up and it slowly straightens the pin out for you. That way it's easier to put back in. So now you've got a straight enough pin that this is kind of closed enough. You should be able to slip it back. So that one feels fairly stable. That one does not. <laughs> And then see if she pops out. So I applied just a little bit of pressure from the inside just to pop the lip up. I'll slip the screwdriver underneath the lip, turn, give another turn. Off she comes. But that bearing there is fairly sturdy. So it seems like the inner bearing seems to wear more. And then as far as this shaft goes, whoop, I found a problem. Oh yeah. Looks like there's a little wave spring, which I thought the wave spring that was over there was part of the wheel bearing itself but it looks like the wave spring is meant to sit here so I have to take the other side apart put it back together the right way but now I know so this has a little bit of pitting it doesn't have as much metal wear as the other side did Probably because this side didn't actually have a true bearing failure. All right, so you can see there's a fair amount of in and out play, and then there's a fair amount of side to side play. Whereas with the new one, there is no in and out play. And the side to side play is very minimal. And then looking at this one, you can see it's kind of belled out a little bit. So this is arcing outward. Whereas on this one, it's fairly flat. And on the one that came apart, you can see that outer curve is way farther. So essentially, let's see if we can line these up. You've got new starting to fail fully failed so you can see how far that's blown out how that's blown out and how straight that is hopefully that wasn't too quiet for the camera <laughs> so if you wind up trying to use something like this to drive the bearing in you should not because you can see these two it'll apply pressure to that inner bearing and it's possible if you were to drive it like this, then you could cause damage because you're putting force directly here, which will put force directly here, which could put force directly through here and will actually cause this kind of bowing to this kind of bowing and could cause premature bearing failure. So we'll use the old bearing, blown up bearing as the driver again, and just tap her in. doesn't just 
go in by hand. All right. This one doesn't go in by hand. So there's a slight chance that if you have a bearing failure like the other wheel had, that you may have a worn wheel or like a possible like wheel failure coming someday. But we've had this, I think, three to four years. And this is the first thing that's actually broken on it. But three, four years of mowing in Minnesota versus three, four years of mowing in say like North Carolina, I'm sure is completely different. <laughs> All right, so correct assembly would be wave spring, wheel, washer, cutter pin. And you can see cutter pins bent, so it's going nowhere. Then find the little indentations in the wheel, put the little hub cap back in, she's good to go. The lawnmower is all fixed now, nothing weird goes on, wheels are staying upright. Rolls as smooth as ever. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll check you next time. Come to Papa.